So everyone is saying how disabling power saving features reduces input lag, but does it really? Or is it just increasing your power bill? We gamers are chasing milliseconds like they owe us rent, and that's okay, but what if the very thing holding you back is a thing called power saving mode? Well, in today's video, we're about to find out once and for all. We dove into the dark and dusty trenches of our Windows and BIOS settings to answer the big question. Do these eco-friendly options turn your PC into a potato, or are they a major thing holding you back from becoming the next Peterbot? So here's the deal. I'm disabling everything that even smells like it wants to save power. In BIOS, we're flipping off C states, ASPM, PSS support, PSU idle control, and all that save the penguin stuff. In Windows, we're disabling USB and PCIe power saving, dynamic tick, CPU idle, power throttling, and GPU P states. We'll test the input delay using an LDAT, then cap frame X for the frame times and FPS, latency mon for the interrupt to process latency, and finally, a power meter, so we can accurately measure the total PC power consumption before and after these tweaks. And just to make sure none of you feel left out, we'll also run the before and after tests on both Intel and AMD machines to see how they affect input lag and performance. Bruh. Oh man, that's because I still had CPU idle enabled. But you know what wasn't idle? My ISP watching every frame of that L like it was a Netflix original. Speaking of digital disasters, let me tell you how to avoid another kind, using the internet without a VPN. Huge thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video and for giving my online privacy more protection than my parents had when, well, you know. Surfshark encrypts your connection so your data isn't just flapping in the breeze for every creepy coffee shop Wi-Fi hacker to see. And if you're into region-locked content like anime, games, international deals, Surfshark lets you teleport your IP like you've got admin commands. Plus, you can run it on unlimited devices so you can protect your PC, your phone, your PS5, your grandma's iPad, and whatever else is connected. It also has a feature called Surfshark Search, which is like incognito mode, but 10 times better as it doesn't allow anyone to see or track your online queries. And you know what's even better? Their 30-day money-back guarantee, so why not give it a try? You can go to surfshark.com slash framesync or use code framesync at checkout to get four extra months of Surfshark VPN. Love you, Surfshark. Now back to the video. So since this test has to be very precise, I decided to go with Counter-Strike 2, as it seems to have the least latency and frame fluctuations, and here are the stock results with all power saving features enabled. I also did 20 runs consecutively in order to determine the standard deviation. In our case, that means any difference of up to 4% in the following benchmarks will be disregarded as most likely nothing changed at all. It's probably good to know that this was all tested on Windows 11 24H2 using the latest 3624 build. More information such as the NVIDIA driver version and full system specs can be seen on the screen right now. And since I don't want to waste your time any longer, let's get straight to the results. We'll kick it off by disabling all USB and PCIe device power saving. I did this using a script to avoid doing everything manually, which takes a long time. You can also download the script, plus many more, including over 20 power plans and custom operating systems from our Discord. Next up is the infamous Dynamic Tick. Dynamic Tick is a power saving feature that causes inconsistent timing behavior, specifically when the system is in idle state. However, most metrics were within the standard deviation range and it doesn't seem to affect the performance or input delay in games, considering that the system is not idling while gaming. My recommendation is to keep Dynamic Tick disabled. Even though it doesn't make a major difference in games, it doesn't hurt either, nor it increases power draw by a lot. Next on the list is Power Throttling. What it does is it basically throttles down specific processes that are deemed unnecessary at a given moment in order to save power. This is not to be confused with Thermal Throttling and Throttle States, which we'll talk about next. However, it's recommended that you keep this on as it will help throttle unused processes like browser tabs, for example. Next, we'll look at the throttling states. The results after disabling them, once again, fell within the margin of error, and that's expected. Throttle states control whether Windows can request the CPU to throttle its frequency or enter a lower performance state to save power, 
which won't or shouldn't happen while playing a game unless your system is overheating. I'd highly recommend keeping throttle states enabled, especially on laptops or PCs with mediocre cooling to prevent the CPU from overheating and potentially causing damage, even though your system will shut off automatically after reaching a certain thermal threshold. We've also added spread spectrum to the list, and while it's not necessarily a power-saving feature, lots of people recommend disabling it to get more stable CPU clocks. Although it didn't give us any significant performance boost, it did decrease the interrupt to process latency by a huge chunk. What Spread Spectrum does is it basically jitters the base clock slightly, which reduces electromagnetic interference in order to pass the FCC electromagnetic compatibility standards. It's mostly disabled for overclocking purposes and latency sensitive tasks, so it wouldn't hurt if you go ahead and disable it for good. Next, we disabled ASPM, which once again didn't make much of a difference, yet increased our power draw by about 6 watts. I'd recommend keeping it disabled as there's a tiny chance it'll improve the latency of your PCIe devices such as GPU, NVMe, and NIC under some very specific conditions. I also disabled power supply idle control, and the difference was negligible, even though it did decrease our interrupt to process latency and increased power draw slightly. I recommend setting it to typical current idle, which is the equivalent of it being disabled in our case. This can help if your system is feeling sluggish on idle, or if you're experiencing freezes, boot hangs, and if your system fails to wake up from sleep. Next up, I disabled AMD Cool and Quiet, or PSS support, as MSI has named it on their boards. This one was pretty huge and decreased our interrupt to process latency by nearly half while increasing the power draw by about 20%. Other metrics, on the other hand, didn't see a change big enough to break out of the standard deviation range. I'd still recommend disabling it if you care about low interrupt to process latency and don't mind an extra 20 watts power draw. The way it works is by scaling the CPU frequency and voltage based on the current system load, while having it disabled will keep your CPU at the max possible frequency and voltage, even on idle. Next, I disabled a BIOS feature called Power Down Enable and saw about 10% power draw increase with almost no gaming benefits. I'd recommend keeping it disabled if you really care about the lowest possible latency, the way it works is by putting your RAM into a low power state when it's not being accessed, which can introduce tiny stutters and latency spikes when accessing memory after idle. I also couldn't help but disable GPU P states, and while I think most of us already knew that won't give us a performance increase, it did decrease our interrupt to process latency very slightly. I'd leave this one for you to decide, but it could help eliminate stutters in some games, especially in VR, by locking the GPU frequency to maximum. Let me know in the comments if you disable P states or not. Now let's move to the next one, C states. Other than the 20% interrupt to process latency decrease and the 10% power draw increase, there wasn't much of a benefit to input delay and FPS. I believe lots of people disable C states the moment they get a new motherboard, so I'm not going to try and change your mind. The way it works, however, is by detecting cores that are idle and putting them to sleep. It usually takes up to 100 microseconds, or a tenth of a millisecond, for a core to exit a sleep state, depending on the depth. But if you're chasing the lowest possible latency, feel free to disable them in the BIOS. And last on the list, we've got CPU idle. I ran the specific benchmark 10 times with and without SMT just to make sure the results are accurate. And for those of you who think disabling CPU idle will give you zero delay, you might be shooting yourself in the foot and tanking your performance. CPU idle works in a similar way to C states, but not only it doesn't let your cores sleep, it also locks your CPU to 100% at all times. Needless to say, this is unnecessary, and it only increases power draw and heat generation while providing absolutely no performance benefits, actually quite the opposite. And to go out with a bang, literally, I also disabled all power saving features in Windows and BIOS at once, excluding CPU idle, to see if that'll make any difference at all. And, well, to prove that all the results from earlier were within the standard deviation range as well, 
As expected, we saw no FPS boost nor input delay improvement, but what we really got is slightly decreased interrupt to process latency and a huge 35% increase to power draw. I also ran Cyberpunk with Ray Tracing Ultra preset, as some of you suggested it might affect demanding games differently than competitive games, and saw very similar results to what we had in Counter-Strike 2. Oh well. But fear not, because I ran these tests on an Intel machine running a 14600K and an RTX 4070. After all, I don't want to leave my Intel homies in the dust. The problem is, we still saw very similar results to our AMD Ryzen machine, but this time, we had a larger interrupt to process latency decrease and up to a whopping 70% power draw increase. Well, my wallet is definitely not going to like this. But is this it? Does that mean disabling power saving features will leave me with a higher power bill and absolutely no real world benefits? What about my zero delay I was promised by the gurus? Well, in short, yes, you've been lied to. But it's not that simple. Let me explain. Power saving features are mostly meant to kick in when your system is idle or when it's not under a significant load that requires the highest clocks, voltages, and cores to be active and executing instructions. But there's a little problem. Games don't put a consistent load on your components, in this case, your CPU and PCIe devices, which means some cores might still be put to sleep or have their frequencies decreased in order to, well, save power. And while this might not be the case in controlled environment benchmarks, such as ours, and even synthetic benchmarks, your component's load will definitely fluctuate when playing a real Counter-Strike or Fortnite match. What this means is, when power saving features are enabled, you will indeed get more inconsistent frame times and input delay. This doesn't necessarily mean your input delay will be lower per se, but you won't be getting that sluggish feeling as often as you would when having all power saving features enabled. So what's the conclusion? Well, it's rather simple. If you're on a desktop with good cooling, disable all power saving features we mentioned in the video with a few exceptions like CPU idle, throttle states, and power throttling. However, if you're using a laptop for example, I'd only recommend disabling those at your own risk while also keeping an eye on your temperatures when gaming. And lastly, having most power saving features disabled could also help with low latency audio and video editing, overclocking your components, benchmark consistency, frame time stability, and much more. But you have to remember that every good thing has some drawbacks to it, which in this case are higher power draw, increased heat generation, louder fans, and potentially slightly reduced lifespan of your components. Having said all of this, I hope this video helped you learn more about how power saving features correlate to input delay. Thanks for watching, love you all, and I'll see you in the next one.